Assalamu alaikum and welcome to the report. I'm Yasmin Khatoun and I'll be taking a look at the stories that matter to you. We will be discussing news stories from throughout the week and the ones that you've all been talking about. On the report, we do love to hear what you think, so to join the conversation, get tweeting using hashtag the report. Later on in the programme, we'll be going through the topics that have been trending throughout the week. But before we get into the conversation, let's have a look at some of the week's news. A huge fire has destroyed a garment factory in Bangladesh. The factory is thought to have been supplying key Western brands. Authorities have said the blaze was sparked by workers angered over the killing of a fellow worker. There have been no initial reports of casualties, although as many as 18,000 people worked at the factory. A factory fire last November killed over 100 workers with further industrial disasters throughout the year. The recent string of accidents in Bangladesh has put the government, industrialists and the global brands that use the factories under pressure to reform the industry that employs 4 million people and generates 80% of export earnings. Garments from US retailers, American Eagle Outfitters, Gap Inc and Walmart stores were found on the grounds. April will see the first anniversary of a building collapse that killed more than 1,100 people. Further fatalities have come amid protests around the country, with at least five people killed and scores injured amid the announcement that elections are to take place on the 5th of January. A student protester has been killed in clashes between Muslim Brotherhood supporters and security forces at Cairo University. Hundreds of students from Cairo University staged a march in the square outside the university's gates and were dispersed by police using water cannon and tear gas. The students were demonstrating against harsh new restrictions on the right to protest, recently adopted by the military-backed interim government that ousted Egypt's first elected president, Mohamed Morsi. Egypt's new legislation, signed by the interim president, Adli Mansour, bans protests that do not have prior police notification. The crackdown on the Muslim Brotherhood has killed over 1,000 protesters and led to the imprisonment of thousands. This comes as an Alexandria court jailed 14 women for 11 years for obstructing traffic during a separate protest. Seven other women under the age of 18 were sent to a juvenile prison. Speaking in Oman, the UN High Commissioner for Refugees announced over three million people have now fled the war in Syria. Antonio Gutierrez said the official figures hid the true extent of the issue. We have reached yesterday 2,264,000 Syrian refugees registered by UNHCR in the region. But uh, taking into account uh, uh, what the governments know about other Syrians that fled the conflict uh, and uh, did not register because they don't need direct assistance from UNHCR, uh, from the countries or the international community, we believe that now more than three million Syrians have fled the country. The international community needed to offer greater support to countries bordering Syria that are shouldering the weight of the refugee crisis. This is the moment for the international community to fully understand that the support provided to the countries of the region needs to be strongly enhanced, needs to be really massive, because there is a risk for the asylum space if that doesn't happen. This comes as battles between rebel fighters, President Bashar al-Assad's forces continues at least 100,000 people have been killed in the civil war so far. Iran and six world powers clinched a deal on Sunday to curb the Iranian nuclear program in exchange for initial sanctions relief. The agreement, which halts Iran's most sensitive nuclear activity, its higher-grade enrichment of uranium, was tailored as a package of confidence-building steps 
towards reducing decades of tension and ultimately creating a more stable, secure Middle East. The interim pact between Iran and the United States, France, Germany, Britain, China and Russia won the critical endorsement of Iranian clerical supreme leader Ayatollah Ali Khomeini. It was, however, criticized by many others, including Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. Netanyahu said that he will be sending a team to Washington for talks with the United States on the nuclear deal. Reiterating a long-standing threat to use military action against Iran if needed, he declared that Israel has the right and the duty to defend itself. President Obama has long been criticized for his desire to engage with U.S. foes. The White House has declined to identify a date for the next round of talks between Iran and world powers, but a spokesman said on Monday that Washington was eager to get started. Francis Legg reporting for Islam Channel. The mistrust that's existed for many, many years between our two nations. None of that. Those issues we have Alan Mohammed from British Egyptians for Democracy and Masoud Shajara, Director of the Islamic Human Rights Commission. Joining me later on in the program will be Azad Ali from Engage. But before we go to that, Lots of different things on the news there. Um, Egypt, Syria, Iran, Bangladesh. Um, if I could come to you, Allah, first of all, we've seen 11 women charged and then a further eight who are, who are minors. What's going on? Um, what we've seen in Egypt is a continuation of repression against um, peaceful protesters who are protesting the um, military coup that took place on the 3rd of July. What we've seen on uh, the news um, two days ago was the sentencing of girls. We have schoolgirls, the youngest is 15. They have been um, charged with actual outrageous sentences. Well, I've, ju I've just seen an article from Amnesty International. There's yeah. international outrage on things like this. Masoud, can I bring you in? Human rights abuse? It is, but it's been systematic. I mean, really what is happening in Egypt now is, is much worse than what was happening at the time of Hosni Mubarak. And, uh, you know, security forces going into schools and uh, putting people under pressure. And, and in reality, with the new legislation that you cannot have a demonstration before you ask permission, the revolution would have never happened. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and, you know, if people wanted to wait and get permission from Mr. Mubarak to go in the streets, they would have never been given. It really, uh, I, think, I think the issue is, the, is that, you know, the apathy and uh, sort of the silence from main powers, United States and so forth, and the involvement of Israel on one side in supporting the military coup and Saudi Arabia from the other side supporting the military coup. And, uh, you know, some Muslim elements and Egyptian elements who are also supporting, like the Salafi movement and so forth. We really need to, not only those of us who are standing for human rights everywhere, you know, need to stand up, but we need to force others to actually stop this hypocrisy and actually a stand up for ordinary Egyptians who have got very, you know, have got all their rights, which was given to them only for a very short time, completely removed from them. Now, we haven't seen an international outcry and this new piece of legislation. Can you tell me a bit more about that, Allah? We have the draconian um, rule that was um, the, the protest um, law now. Uh, you're not allowed to protest um, more than 10 people can actually gather and they, they need to get a prior permission to do that. And what we've seen is that instead of the current military um, government, instead of um, bringing um, transparent investigations into the killings of people by the police and the army since the 25th of January revolution, instead they're giving a um, a legal cover for more killings and more yes. repression to, to the protesters um, on the streets. And today we've seen um, thousands of, of students and um, Egyptians taken to the street in defiance to, to, uh, to that law. And what we're seeing now is, is a return to the 25th of January revolution. The, the, the one principal gain that the, the people gained was the freedom of assembly and the freedom to, to, to say what they wanted to say. And what we're seeing now is that this freedom is taken away from them by the military coup. What we need to see in Egypt is a return to democracy. And that's the only way forward for Egyptians now. Yeah, I, I, I think, you know, the sister is absolutely right. But I think we need to understand how this happened. This would not happen uh, if United States actually pays for the military in Egypt and Saudi Arabia to also have put a, injected a huge amount in support of uh, this coup. This coup would not have happened. And, and therefore, we need to sort of uh, look not just on Egyptians, 
who are going in the street and giving lives to sort of bring back, but also what the international community is doing positively against the interests and human rights of the Egyptians. Talking of the U.S. now, the um, agreement with Iran, unexpected? Well, I, I think I think you know. If anything, it was it was expected, this, especially after the sort of uh, two weeks ago sort of uh, uh, deal with didn't happen in Geneva. I think um, you know at that time it was very clear that what uh, put the Spaniards in was France, uh, which uh, afterward the uh, French officials uh, and president when he went to Israel was actually praised by Netanyahu for stopping the deal. But this time it went through, and I think it's is uh, good for the whole region because the reality is that uh, Iran has announced uh, publicly that they are not interested in uh, atomic weapon. As a matter of fact, the, um, the clergy in Iran have said that it's unlawful, it's haram. And so not just that, but also all weapons of mass destruction. And so we needed to have a transparency and move forward. And what is so wonderful to see is, is that, you know, states, uh, you know, warmongers like uh, Israel are now hopping mad uh, and, and, and actually being isolated. Well, we have seen uproar from the Israeli side in light of uh, those agreements. That must have been expected. It, it, that is expected, but also that shows that this is good for the region. Because, you know, the reality is that, um, you know, the Zionist state needs conflict to survive. And now, if there is a peace and tranquility, it actually endangers its existence. And I think from that point of view, it's good to see uh, you know, the, more harmony in the region. It's good for everyone. Now, in the clip, we did see Syria there. We said nearly three million refugees spilling into con neighboring countries. I know Egypt has many. Um, how does this affect what's going on in those countries? Ala, can I ask you? Well, what we've seen after the coup um, is that the, the treatment of Syrian refugees and Palestinian refugees is actually appalling. It's outrageous the way they're treated. Um, before the coup, they were welcomed um, as Egyptian citizens. They were allowed into schools. They were allowed to, to stay freely without visas. But right now, they are actually trying to flee the country from the, the horrible treatment they're receiving from the, the military government at the moment. The military government is not only targeting Egyptians, it's targeting anyone at the moment and the Syrians and the Palestinians are actually affected as well and we've seen an, uh, an Amnesty International um, report on, on the Syrian refugees and, and the way they're treated and I think this is um, absolutely outrageous to, to, to see this happening and the world is, is really silent um, towards what's happening to the refugees.